Hello there and welcome to this video where we are going to be setting up and running our first iOS application using Rad Studio and Delphi. So before we get in, let's have a quick look at what we're going to be covering. Firstly, Rad Studio uses the FireMonkey framework to produce cross-platform applications. So we're going to literally open up a, a sample a default application and we're going to use that to check it on Windows. And then we're going to look at what we need to do there from our local development environment to get it compiling out onto iOS. So the steps here mainly include installing onto Mac OS the PA server. We're going to look at how we get the IP address from the PA server and use that within Rad Studio to form the bridge that then allows us to deploy, sign, and then dispatch onto the actual iOS device the application we've been building. So this uses a similar process to developing for Mac OS. Once we've got our app deployed, we're going to look at how we can debug it. Now, as we go through, I'm going to look at some of the things that you need to check along the way if you're having any issues, just to be able to make sure that you're able to get up and running as quickly and as smoothly as possible. OK, so let's get into it. So before we jump into the actual IDE, um, I'm just going to show you this web page here, docwiki.embarcadero.com. And in there, if you actually come to the main documentation, uh, you can see there's mobile development listed and under here, iOS mobile application development. So here is a detailed step-by-step -step what you need to do to get through. And we can see here there's a lot more items that have to be done for deploying to iOS than Android. So primarily, you know, creating and installing a provisioning profile, um, creating a connection profile, which we're going to have a look at in a moment, uh, using PA server on the Mac to make the bridge and get the connection running, um, and then getting ready to run. So the basic steps here are the same as you need to do if you're developing with Xcode. You need to join the Apple Developer Program, and you need to have a certificate for the device. And um, if you can connect to the iPad in Xcode, then you're pretty much ready to go and use it through Rad Studio. So just for example here, if you come into your Mac, open up Xcode, and under the Windows, if you have a look for devices and simulators, once your iPad is plugged in or your iPhone and you have trusted the device, you'll then be able to see it listed here. Uh, and if that is the case, then you're pretty much ready to go. OK, so let's jump into our IDE. Now, I've got a very simple application that I've put together here, um, which is just an edit control, a button, and a label. And all we're going to do is just take the edit control value and put it onto the label here, um, which is just edit one.txt equals, sorry, label one.txt equals edit one.txt. And there's literally nothing else that we're doing here. This is as simple an application as we can put together. So what we need to have a look at is our target platforms over here. So by default, you're normally going to have Windows 32 selected. And I'm just going to go ahead and run that here. Now I've selected run without debugging here, so the breakpoint isn't going to fire. And if I just put in hello world and hit update, we can see that's working. Uh, and likewise, if I actually hit run with debugging, and put uh, hello to, we can now see we have the full call stack coming up. We can see the watches that I've put in here for edit1.txt and label1.txt. And I can see that the breakpoint is here. And if I just work my way through, I can see that before and after the value is updating. So very, very simplistic debugging, but we can see the whole call stack and everything running. So that's the Windows experience. Now let's get this on to iOS. So the first thing we're going to do here is select the iOS device. And at the moment, I can't actually target anywhere. Um, I haven't actually got anything to target. 
Uh, and that's because I haven't got a profile set up and I haven't got my PA server running on the I, on the, the Mac hardware. So let's jump back to the Mac. And here I've copied in PA server. Now PA server, by default, is in the C programs Embarcadero Studio and then whichever the current version is, PA server folder. And you'll find in here the, D, uh, the PKG file. So if you just copy that onto your Mac, double click to run it through, and literally you can just choose the defaults all the way through here. You can change the location if you so wish to. Uh, I've never found any need to. And that is it. That's all we need to do to get PA Server installed. So now we can use our search to type in PA Server. And we can see it's found PA Server 21, which is the current version. And opening that up launches this terminal window with the application running. So the first thing you ask for is a password. Now this password is the password that's going to be used to connect to PA server. Um, I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to put no password in for the moment. And PA server is now up and running. Now being a text interface, um, you can press question mark to get up a list of the, the commands. I'm going to hit I here for the IP address. And I can see this 192.168.111.143. Now I'm pretty sure that my VM is going to be running on that same subnet. So let's jump back to my VM. And I'm now going to build on the Windows VM our application. So the first time we build, it's going to pop up this dialog asking for a connection profile. And I'm going to call this my Mac. I'm going to put in the IP address that we picked up from the PA server on the Mac. Just test the connection, that's all good. Now if you did pick up a password then you just need to put the password in here and hit finish. And what's going to happen now is the PA server is going to communicate with Rad Studio. It's going to find that there's a specific iPhone OS SDK on the, on the, uh, on the Mac OS machine. And it's going to harvest the libraries from the Mac that's required from the SDK to be able to statically link into the applications that we're building and um, have those ready to deploy. So once the files have been harvested, they can then be um, used to build the application, which is then deployed back to the Mac. That is then used to do the code signing there and then we're kind of ready to get that distributed onto the iOS device directly from our Mac. So the rules about distribution from Apple imply that uh, you need to have all the signing done on physical Mac hardware, hence the harvesting of the SDK, checking all the bits here, getting it all bundled and packaged and compiled and linked on the, from the IDE, and then pushing the package back to the Mac for the signing to happen, so it's then applying to the rules from Apple. And that's why you need to have your Apple developer certificates and provisioning profiles and everything in place as well. Okay, so now once it's finished harvesting, we're finishing the compile and it's linking through. Okay, and that looks good now. So under our iOS targets, we can now see that we have picked up the iPad from PA server because um, it's connected onto the Mac. We can also see that we've got our configuration build there as development. So the different build configurations here for App Store allow us, and uh, development and for ad hoc allow us to target different types of packages using iOS. So when we're ready to deploy to the store, then we can use the application store build. But let's go ahead now and try and build and run this out onto our iOS device.
So we can see now it's provisioning, deploying, and executing it onto the device. So I'm just going to try and uh, get my iPad to reflect up here uh, using Reflector. <clears throat> okay, there we are. Running onto iOS for the first time for any package takes slightly longer because all the resources, the images and everything that goes with the application is being packaged together and then deployed across the device which takes a little bit of time and especially if you're running with debug as well then you have all the additional debug information which uh, literally doubles the size of the, the application for debugging. So um, once that's all through then um, we'll see this launching up. So we can see here it is, up it comes and we can now go ahead and type in something like uh, hello world and hit update and now we can see that our simple very very simple application is working on the iOS device. So I did say we we're going to have a quick look at the debugging as well. So exactly the same as earlier we're just now going to choose run with debugging and we can see in the IDE we've already got the breakpoint selected uh, by clicking in the margin there of the button one click. And we'll see now that the second run is going to be a bit quicker than the previous one. And up it comes. And now this time if we type into the box and we'll click on the update again. So let's just type a hello world 42. And now as we hit update you can see it looks like it's frozen. But if we come into the IDE we can see now that the breakpoint is actually hit. And we can see the full call stack in the corner there with all the inheritance workings from buttons to controls um, all the way down. If we go ahead and put a watch in here, so let's type in label1.text, we can see now that the watch will appear. Here we are with the current value, which is just label1. And if we press F8 to step through, we can see now that is updated with Hello World 42. So all working as it should do, which is pretty good. And the ability to step through the code and debug it on Windows directly from the iOS device. So we hit uh, F9 to run through and we can see now that the IDE is clear. So that's it. That's our first application running on iOS. In summary, with the Rad Studio, we've been able to build our first cross-platform application. We've been using the PA server as that bridge between Windows and Mac OS, which is then allowing us to target out onto the iOS device using the requirements of the App Store and the uh, and Apple for the uh, for the deployment of applications using the developer certificates. We've um, been able to uh, then run and debug out onto the iOS device as well. So there's some excellent documentation that we've had a look at. Um, please remember to check into that. But for now, happy coding and thank you very much for joining us.